What is going on Joe Squad? This your boy Joe and I'm back with another video. So man, what a crazy weekend. What a crazy weekend. So you have the Lakers beating the Memphis Grizzlies in game one, which was expected. I don't think anyone is really expecting or let me say this. I don't think anybody would be surprised if the Lakers beat the Memphis Grizzlies. Okay. You mean you have Anthony Davis. Um, you have Anthony Davis. You have LeBron James. And you have a game where Rory, I think that's how you say his name. Um, is it Hachimura? Has 29 points. Austin Reeves became the fourth quarter assassin. I think he finished with, what, 23 points. And I think he had, what? 13 points in the in the fourth quarter right so he got hot and then you also have lebron and ad right and i don't know how many times or if this is the first time in history that lebron has actually won a playoff game where he wasn't the leading scorer right or not even just the leading scorer but he wasn't top two in scoring right so crazy finish. Um, my concern would be for the Lakers is, you know, can the role players consistently step up? Right. Because that's going to be a major factor. Um, the Milwaukee Bucks, man. The Bucks go down in game one to the Miami Heat by a huge deficit. Um, of course, they lost Giannis. Um, I think he suffered a uh, lower back injury. So they lose Giannis. They lose Giannis. And the Heat put up, if I can recall, 130 points, right? So the Heat end up ends up beating the Bucks 117 um, to 133. I mean, 130. They put up 130 points. A large part to Giannis being out. Um, but we can't forget that, um, man, Jimmy, Jimmy Butler can go, man. I think people tend to forget how big time Jimmy Butler is. Um, so not surprising that the Bucks go down game one and the Bucks fought, um, the Bucks, you can kind of watching that game. You can kind of see, um, that they have a pretty good team you know they have a pretty good nucleus of players um and they can go to their bench you know they're pretty deep um in my opinion uh you know so i think that losing Giannis, you know you you lose a lot when you lose Giannis. you know and i think them losing him they lost a lot of scoring um that room protector and just overall presence you know with him not being on the court um and then the warriors go down to the kings in game one Steph hit a lot of big shots down the stretch. Um, but ultimately, man, Sacramento came out with the with the W. And, you know, I think not a lot of people expected Sacramento to, pay, to play at the pace, you know, that they played at, being that they were facing the Warriors, right? You never want to play at the pace of the Warriors, you know, up and down, um, you know, a fast-paced game. And they played the Warriors game. And beat the Warriors, um, so I think that series is going to be pretty interesting. Um, now, the Boston Celtics, man, they just look—they look like the best team in the NBA to me. If I had to pick, the the Celtics look like the clear favorites in the East. Like, there's no question who's winning the East right now. You know, clearly Boston is head and shoulders above all the competition in the east in my opinion the west is still up for grabs if i had to choose whoever wins this clippers sun series i think they're going to win the western conference you know what i'm saying i think that those two teams um they look they look primed and ready if they if both teams can stay healthy and one of those teams advance um i think your western conference finals is going to come from that suns clippers game um, 
So something else I wanted to touch on, um, you know, while we're kind of talking about the playoffs and I'm, you know, kind of, you know, going through that. But I wanted to talk about an opinion that I have that I wanted to share with you guys. And um, that's the fact that, you know, or I guess tell you my reason why I don't I don't focus as much, you know, on the players in the 60s and 70s you know when you're talking about ranking your top five and ranking your top 10 um you know i usually don't focus on the 60s and 70s um for good reason and you know i use because i often you know make the argument that kobe's 81 um was better than wilt's 100 and it's not just because of the time that Kobe was playing in and a variety of shots, you know, that he that he had to hit to get to that point. Um, but I think mainly it's because of the rules, you know, and I think a lot of people don't understand the game of basketball. And, you know, before those rules were changed and, and, and revised, how much of an advantage you know, a Wilt Chamberlain had or a, a Bill Russell had um, or even a George Mikan, right, who nobody really talks about or considers, you know, great, I guess, because he doesn't come up very often. So what I mean by that is when you talk about the rule changes, right, um, and, you know, to kind of focus on Kobe and Wilt and just look at the advantages that Wilt had. So one of the rules that they changed – because of Wilt was the fact that um, or it was the inbounding rule the fact that they could stand behind the backboard and throw the ball lob the ball over the top of the backboard to Wilt Chamberlain he would catch the ball being bigger taller taller more athletic than everybody and dunk the ball in that's how they would score points that's how Wilt would get his points you know not a lot of people know that um, so that was one rule change um, defensive and offensive goaltending, you know, scoring points off of um, being able to just be at the right place, basically force his way under the basket. And, you know, a player would shoot a shot that may be in a cylinder. He just catch it and dunk it or wipe a shot, you know, out of the cylinder, um, you know, things like that. Um, or the free throw line rule where he could stand at the free throw line and they said he would stand at the free throw line and take a step and glide from the free throw line and either dunk or drop the ball in. That's how he shot his free throws. Right. So the rule changes had an impact on how dominant he was. And I think the rule that he benefited the most from would be the lane widening rule. Right. A lot of people don't understand. And, you know. And I had to do my homework on this as well. But the lane from one side to another used to be six feet, right? The lane used to only be six feet across. So basically, you got somebody seven feet tall. And they're, the lane is basically this big. There's no way you're going to be able to box them out successfully enough to prevent them from getting the offensive rebound if, if the ball comes off the rim. Unless it's a, a long rebound. But even if it's a long rebound, they can jump up and change the trajectory of the ball before it bounces off the rim. Or as it's bouncing off the rim, right? So the lane was only six feet. And then they had to change it from, um, I think it was six feet to 12 feet. Because George Mike was too dominant. So think about that. We don't even talk about George Mikan, right? We know the George Mikan uh, drill, and you know we know we know him from from that. Coaches use that drill to train players. But when you talk about dominating the game of basketball, his name never comes up. But he was actually the first person they changed the rule because of. And then you have Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain played part of his time. He played probably before the lane widening. Uh, from 6 to 12 feet actually occurred but he played partially um, at a time in the 60s 
right in the early 60s for sure where he only had to deal with a lane or he was able to work inside of a lane that was only 12 12 feet across from one side to the other so he's basically right under the basket like he's seven feet tall super athletic probably the most athletic player that to ever play at his size he's directly under the basket there's nothing you can do to stop him right and then because of him they will later widen the lane out um four more feet to to what we know today you know 16 feet what we know today um you know and he still what was still pretty good you know but that that change the lane widening change saw the rise of perennial you know guards you know people who could actually um show how skilled they were with the basketball because of the lane widening um change um you see more guards uh you know rise up and i think when you talk about having a player like a wilt chamberlain who you know played the basket play in the air before defensive and offensive goaltending um before uh you could you know before they they stop people players from lobbing the ball over the backboard to utilize his advantage the, the you know the, his size and the advantages um the free throw line being able to jump from the free throw line which is super crazy that he could even do that but jumping from the free throw line and not having to stand behind the basket him being able to take a step you know take one step and jump from the free throw line and dropping the ball in and laying the ball in nothing that the other players could do and then the lane widening rule right so you take all of that into effect and you can you know you start to kind of see why what the players are doing today um or what kobe did scoring 81 was much more impressive um you know so a lot of people always give me give me shit about why i don't have certain players you know in my top 10 like maybe why bill russell is not in my top 10 and he won 11 championships yeah but they only had eight teams you know um and i just think that he played on a team where the majority of those players are in the hall of fame um you know and Wilt only having what one two championships so i mean i just think that they're in a category to themselves um you know and i guess you if you had to if i was forced to man i would throw russell in there i wouldn't put Wilt in my top 10. i don't know who's gonna fill that spot yet but i, I just could i can't put Wilt in my top 10 unless you put a gun to my head i guess but anyway man th that's kind of all i wanted to talk about a uh talk about today anyway man that's all i really wanted to talk about today um i've been seeing a lot of people uh you know asking questions about why i don't you know consider the 60s and 70s um you know part of that era that should be ranked in the in that in that top 10 and that's why you know or why when i talk about greatest score of the basketball you know or you know best game ever why i give the nod to kobe and not wilt um and it's because of that man you know so i just wanted to share that with you guys man y'all let me know what y'all think um about the the rule changes you know should that have an impact on wilt and russell's place in history um you know where do you rank them in your top 10 what is your top 10 you know who who you have in your top 10 man um drop that in the comment section and um also man who you guys picking to win the finals um i've picked the phoenix suns to win the finals um although i'm starting to kind of reconsider i think boston might take it this year you know um but anyway man y'all let me know who y'all got winning the finals man um but yeah man till next time this your boy joe Joe Squad, I'm out.